Hey everyone, Brett here, and sometimes I wear a beret, and I have great news. Dart Zone doesn't hate me. In fact, they may actually tolerate me, because in July 2021, Dart Zone officially reached out to me and sent me some of their new blasters, which is super exciting. They've never done that before. They sent me three things, the Conquest Pro, the Matrix Fire, and the Monolith. But not just those, they sent two times of those. So I'm super appreciative that Dart Zone would do this for me, and of course this video therefore is going to be a little biased because I'm uh, very excited to get almost $200 worth of free blasters. But I waited for a bit of time to make this review video because I wanted to actually test the blasters, play around with them for a little bit of time, and now that they are regularly available online and in stores in many places from Walmart, uh, I think now is the best time to tell you guys whether I think some of them are worth your time and money or not. So I was going to review them separately, but then I realized one of the overarching themes of all three of these blasters was that when they were first announced and then people saw some more images and details of them, the question was, how reliable is that going to be? And that's the question we're going to answer today. Let's begin then with the Conquest Pro. Now this blaster retails for 40 United States dollars. It includes a 15 round magazine, 15 half length pro darts, two spare O-rings, two sights, and a removable barrel or muzzle. It's advertised for ages 14 and up. It claims ranges of over 125 feet, and it is in fact compatible with Talon magazines, as well as other dart zone magazines and other half darts. Next up, we've got the Monolith. This retails for 35 United States dollars, but it does require 6D batteries, which are not included. So you're gonna spend at least 10 more dollars for those batteries, making this one closer to 45 or 50 United States dollars. It includes 40 of the tactical strike rounds or balls, also advertised for ages 14 and up. It claims up to 100 FPS, but no actual range claims that I can find. And it is in fact compatible with Nerf rival ammo and other ammo like chaos rounds from X-Shot. It does advertise online that it can work with Nerf Hyper. Not gonna recommend that because that also contradicts a bit of the consistency we're looking for. And last up, we've got the Matrix Fire. This blaster retails for 30 United States dollars, but it also requires six AA batteries. So you will have to spend at least $5 for those. So this one's more like 35 United States dollars. It includes one removable dart hopper, 30 waffle darts, and a removable sight and foregrip. This one's advertised for ages eight and up, and it claims up to 80 foot ranges. But of course, it is compatible with other full length darts. Many of you are probably well aware of this fact, but because I constantly see comments not understanding the relationship, all of these blasters are under the Adventure Force line, but they are made by Dart Zone. Adventure Force is Walmart's brand for a few things, but when it comes to dart blasters, it includes Dart Zone, Busby, and X-Shot, just to name the ones I can think of. And on each of these blasters, it says powered by PTDZ, and that's Primetime Dart Zone for short. It's an Adventure Force blaster. This is the Adventure Force Conquest Pro, but it's the Dart Zone Conquest Pro as we all know and love it. With that out of the way, let's talk about some basic operations and how I feel about these blasters. Starting of course with the Conquest Pro, this blaster is pump action. Out of these three, it's the only one that's spring powered. This is the included magazine. There's a little uh, notch at the bottom, which tells you that this is what's supposed to face down. Your darts will need to be facing upwards. I mean, that's how the magazine will work, but for other magazines, that's how you'll make sure to load them properly. So it goes right in the butt. You, I said it, there you go. <laughs> that's kind of what it does. It's a rear loading system. It's very different. Haven't seen that from other companies before. It's a bit unique, uh, but it works pretty straightforward. And then if you need to release the magazine, there's a mag release right here and right here. It is on both sides of the blaster, which is nice, but it's a little far out of the way for my finger. So it's usually best for your offhand to hit it. But as you can see, it slides out really easily when you do hit that release. And because this magazine is included, it seems like that was their goal first and foremost. So to operate the blaster, load the magazine in with darts preferably, then you prime back and then you prime forward and now you're ready to fire. Now that was a dry fire just to show you how loud it can be when it does dry fire. It's not recommended that you dry fire these uh, if you can avoid it. Now you can take this front piece off and uh, plug it to reduce a little bit of that noise. This uh, muzzle brake 
barrel, whatever you want to call it, is slightly different than what's included with the Aeon and the Nexus, but you can actually fit mega darts in here, rival rounds in here, so you can fit other kinds of ammo, which is kind of cool. This blaster also advertises being able to be slam fired. So if you hold down the trigger here, you can in fact pump back, sorry, loudness warning, and forward again. Your accuracy is not gonna really be there though because there's no uh, stock. So you're gonna jerk it around like that. I like the Nexus and Aeon grips, but I might have to say that I think the Conquest grip might be my favorite. It's angled back a little bit. It fits my hand really well. There seems to definitely be extra room there too, so I'm assuming that folks with larger hands than me, which is many, will find this blaster totally usable. And the rails up top, you can take the little sights off because they don't do too much, but I've mounted a GoPro here before. Overall, it's easy to operate, a good size for my body, really comfortable. The mag reloading is the only uniqueness to the blaster. Now it is compatible with uh, our favorite Talon magazines. Again, make sure you have the darts facing up, which would help if I actually loaded this up. The cool feature about Talons is that because it is a slightly different fit, I don't actually need to hit the mag release to take them out. Talons being able to just friction fit in there is a curse and a blessing. It means you can reload really easily, but I have seen and confirmed with others that when trying to slam fire this blaster with Talon magazines, sometimes it can jostle it loose. So that's another knock against wanting to use slam fire. Inaccuracy and for some, you know, off-brand magazines, you know, your magazine is going to come out potentially. I do have some other Dart Zone magazines being the ones that came with the Pro Mark I right back there. I was using more of those because I had four. Um, those are the opposite. Those actually fit really tight and they come to show the shortcomings of this uh, mag release. You need to then move your hand off of the grip because you have to hold here and then take the magazine out. Not ideal, but they work. They never came jostled loose like a Talon magazine would. Next up with the Monolith, which man has a good heft when you put those batteries in it. This blaster is of course battery powered, so you do need to install 6D batteries right here. I'm gonna say it right out front, it's kind of a pain to install those batteries and I don't always have problems installing batteries. I swear, I'm a competent adult. Um, these batteries seem like they really don't wanna stay in place and it's a pain to even get this thing closed. I've also found that during use, sometimes it feels like the batteries disengage and we'll see a little bit later. I found that I was testing and it sounded like the batteries were dying. It just turns out that they were not connecting anymore. When they are installed, the blaster sounds like this. Now the conveyor belt sounds a little bit like this. There's a little flap that moves inside, which is kind of unique. So you don't actually have to shake this blaster as much, but this thing, as the name implies, is kind of a brick where I really enjoyed the grip of the Conquest Pro, but this grip is a lot smaller. And unfortunately, oh, I can't even hold this right because those darn batteries, it's so back heavy. This thumb hole stock even makes the grip smaller, smaller. So my hand right here feels extra cramped. And I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of this rev trigger. It feels strangely small, but just based off of usage, I found this rev trigger was kind of a pain to use long term. The trigger seems fine. Foregrip in the front is fine. It's a little thin, but no complaints there. It is a bit deceptive as well that the monolith has these, what looks like three protruding barrels, but it's only this bottom one that actually shoots out the balls, which is deceiving because when you're aiming like this, your eye line goes from the top barrel. And of course it's coming down way, way down here. So you may need to actually compensate by angling a little up. So not the most comfortable blaster, definitely very back heavy but um, at least it's a solid package. And last up, we've got the Matrix Fire. Now this one, of course, does have this dart hopper immediately on the side. As I mentioned, you can remove this dart hopper, but because it only includes one, I kind of wonder why it needed to be included as a detachable option in the first place. When it is clear, well, now you've got access. Nice and easy. You can see how everything works. What does the conveyor sound like? I don't like that sound. I feel like I'm, I'm robbing you of the full effect. Let's put the dart hopper back on one more time.
Well, it's something. It's definitely a noisy boy. When it comes to opening this dart hopper, if you have no darts inside, it really will not want to open for you. It feels like you have to break it to open this thing up. Um, and of course, the, the trickiest thing with a dart hopper is that you have to load the darts all facing forward and doing that you know, on the fly can be a bit difficult. But I will say out of the other dart hopper blasters that Dart Zone's made, I do like this silhouette the most because it feels like the most complete blaster. This little sight up top is of course removable. I could put that on the other rails of the blasters we just showed. And this foregrip is also removable. I did forget that that was a thing the first time I discovered it, so caught me for a bit of a surprise. That said, I don't know if you need it because it's kind of comfortable just to hold the matrix fire like this. It's a little bit small for my hand, but it, it's comfortable. Unfortunately, while I do think the matrix fire handle is a pretty good fit for me, this rev trigger down here is like large enough where now I want to put two fingers on it. So it's, it's kind of awkward and that does detract a little bit from the handle for me. Whatever, it could have been a little bit better, but it's usable at worst. Overall, size, ergonomics of this blaster, I do like. Those have been my general opinions on those three blasters, but now let's actually answer the question. How consistently do these blasters feed? Also, do they actually perform well? Well, I'm happy to say that all of them seem to perform as advertised, which is good because sometimes that doesn't happen. Starting, of course, with the Conquest Pro. This blaster does, in fact, shoot up to 125 feet. I found that the FPS readings for this blaster as well were in line with other Pro blasters, i.e. the Nexus Pro and the Aeon Pro. So around that 140s, 150s mark, which is great. And with the Pro darts included, I found that the accuracy was, uh, as expected, pretty much the same. It's a spring-powered blaster. So, does the Conquest Pro feed reliably? Because it has a unique system where it takes a dart and then it pushes it upwards and it turns it and then it pushes it into the barrel and then you fire it. With included Pro darts and a lot of other Pro dart testing, yes, it actually fed very reliably. So what I did try to do was I tried to put some old darts through this blaster, some old half darts I have sitting around because I have a lot of other half darts that no longer get used. Old worker darts, I put in some old other waffle darts like cut down waffles, different style than the Adventure Force ones. And guess what? I did it guys. I was able to jam the Conquest Pro on Slamfire. So this is another reason I'm not going to recommend slam firing the Conquest Pro. Lack of accuracy, uh, depending on the mag you're using, it's not going to stay in properly, and then it just gives the most likely case of jamming. I have heard that other people have managed to jam their Conquest Pro by using some more worn Adventure Force Pro darts. Personally, I wasn't able to replicate that myself, and it turns out, if you've seen my I'd Run That in a War footage, that I didn't fully clear that jam. It was in the magwell. And I never noticed it because the magwell is all encapsulated, so you're not gonna see it. But I kept having these weird inconsistencies where I was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my blaster now? There was a dart just sitting jammed in the magwell. All I needed to do was poke a little stick or a screwdriver in there, out it came. Now the blaster feed's fine. I haven't had a jam since. So that was extra levels of dumb. Yes, you can jam the Conquest Pro, but when used as advertised, and in general, when used with the proper darts, which are also just the ideal darts, you probably won't, which is great. Maybe it's nice to have a little stick on hand or a little screwdriver, just something you can poke in there uh, should that happen. But otherwise, the Conquest Pro fed just fine. Next up, the Monolith. Yeah, on the other side of that, here's one that I was having more problems with. With the battery problem I already referred to, this wasn't exactly the extent of the problem. When they were working just fine, yes, this blaster was able to perform up to, if not over, 100 feet per second, which is great. That's the rival standard, pretty much. The accuracy was uh, okay, because the reliability on this blaster is kind of the opposite. Unfortunately, this one is super inconsistent, and I couldn't figure out if it was a certain type of ammo, because I used the original ammo, I used nerf ammo, I used a mixture of other stuff like headshot ammo, proton rounds that I had lying around. I couldn't form a logical conclusion just based off of my testing. This blaster just doesn't feed consistently, which is a bit sad. Sometimes it's okay, and sometimes I just hold it there 
and literally nothing happens. And it's not like the blaster's overloaded because it says it works with 40 Adventure Force rounds. But even if you underload that so that you know it'll feed consistently, this blaster still just wasn't delivering the kind of reliability I was hoping to get. Luke from Out of Darts reported a similar problem, and I know that's only a sample size of two, but then upon looking more online to see if my findings were about, you know, on par, Yes, it turns out a lot of other people have had similar experiences. The monolith was just not delivering the hits in its stock configuration. And lastly, the matrix fire. Well, its FPS reading seemed to be pretty good. As per usual, that dart zone, um, 80s, 90s sometimes, usually the first shot was decent, and then the subsequent shot because the flywheels were, you know, a little tired after firing that first dart would then slow down a little bit. So sometimes you'd see like 70 or even in the 60s. But when it came to testing how reliable the dart hopper was on the Matrix Fire, it, it was a bit mixed. It was definitely between the Conquest and between the Monolith. So a lot of the time the rate of fire was acceptable, but it was also very noticeable when that rate of fire would change. And sometimes it would be for better, sometimes it would be for worse. Not as noticeable as like the Monolith's hiccups, but it was still like, oh, it's slowing down. Do I need to hit the dart hopper? It comes down to just a little bit how you load it, even though it's really, really difficult to load a dart hopper in any which way because you can't interact with it once it's actually in that hopper. Sometimes that comes down to the quality of the darts, even though waffle darts fed just fine through this. You can also fit elite darts through this if you really hate yourself or other full length darts. I didn't have any jams when I loaded it correctly. I've also heard and kind of seen for myself that the previous iteration of this blaster did shoot a little bit faster. I don't actually have my Destructor anymore, but I will say the Matrix Fire was more comfortable to use than the Destructor. For what it was, it seemed to work all right. I could usually clear through all the darts without having any problems. So golly gee, Brett, with all that out of the way, what are my final thoughts and opinions and recommendations for these blasters? Let's start with my pick of the litter. The Conquest Pro is the clear winner for me. When using it properly, you're probably not gonna have any problems. And if you do, like mine, it should be pretty easy to clear. Just, you gotta, you gotta think about clearing it. If you haven't, again, watched that I'd run that in the war footage, you'll know that mm, it frustrates me that I didn't find it earlier, but now the blaster works just fine as is advertised. So the Conquest Pro is a good pickup if you're looking for a high powered Springer in the Pro line. It's also not one that I'd recommend to everyone. Weird loading in the back is something that I don't think everyone will like. So while I do think the Conquest Pro is a good blaster and it's pretty comfortable and I, I really do like the ergonomics of it, I'd probably recommend the Aeon Pro and the Nexus Pro to the average user more often. Those are just a little bit more straightforward and easy to use. But this also fits right in between the price range where the Aeon Pro is 25 bucks and the Nexus is 50 and this one's 40. So I guess it's kind of up to you, but if you do stumble upon a Conquest Pro and you like the gimmick, I do recommend it. The Matrix Fire is uh, somewhere in the middle. This one's okay. I think it's a very situational blaster because I have used it and I found enjoyment out of it, but with a very specific <laughs> uh, sense of mind. I've had this one loaded up, ready to use, and then when it's done, it's done. I, I reload it another round and that's that. Because they did send me two of these hoppers, I found that was the best way to reload. If they're going to make the hopper detachable, I do think it would be nice to have more hoppers available for purchase, but I don't know if they're going to actually do that because I don't know how long this blaster is going to be available for. It doesn't feed the most consistently, but I found that I could, you know, use it effectively. I, I really enjoyed using this as a covering fire blaster. Does that mean it's a bad blaster? No, but I'm not sure how many people I can recommend this to. Still, I do really like the silhouette of this guy. And also for modders out there, I mean, cut the front off. There's some good potential for this guy. I could see it. And lastly, well, the monolith. You probably can tell what my thoughts are on the monolith. I am not a fan of this one, unfortunately. I heard some good things about this guy, so I was curious to check it out myself, but this is the most disappointing of the lot. And as I mentioned as well, with the battery costs, this is the most expensive. I've seen one too many comments of people saying that this is a discount Percy's, or this is like a budget Nerf Percy's. It's not. The Percy's is easily double the price, but the Percy's works so much better than this blaster. Sorry. I've seen people talking about 3S builds by putting a LiPo in this blaster, and I could see that definitely changing the tide. I've seen video proof. So 
if you're a modder out there, it sounds like this blaster does have potential. But as it is right now, stock configuration, I'm not impressed. And even with a little bit of modding, I just don't love the ergonomics of this thing. The, the handle is awkwardly small, which is supposed to be for an older audience. My favorite part is easily the loading door because it is super easy. Hit that latch, open it up, balls, balls, close. Now you can't actually remove the door entirely, which is kind of a problem because, well, if you misplace this, then um, you kind of can't use this. I mean, you can, you can hold down this little latch right here to make sure it can work, but obviously your entire window is exposed and all your ammo is gonna fall out. It does seem kind of easy to remove as well, but hey, that's just me focusing on it. I hope that wouldn't happen in an actual game. The monolith is a slightly disappointing one for me. That said, I know some people who do have plans for this blaster, and if you are looking to tinker with it, I think it could be a fun platform. So maybe your opinions are different, and maybe you've had different experiences. If you have, I would love to hear from you in the comment section down below. I have posted gameplay footage, including the Conquest Pro and the Matrix Fire, but not the Monolith because I was too sad to post it. Let's just say that. Oh, I wasn't wearing a GoPro. That's the real reason why. These are decent offerings from Dart Zone. They're definitely budget friendly, which is nice. I just think that it's hard to say that all of them are amazing when I think some of them are better than others. Huge, huge thank you to Dart Zone for sending these my way. They have been really fun to play with and test out, and I look forward to anything they have to send me in the future that I can talk about and give my super positive, nothing negative reviews on. Thanks, Dart Zone. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Subscribe for more Dart Zone reviews. Oh shoot. And I will see you in the next one.